Hello world, I'm Nick and today we're going to look at Azure Durable Functions. So in my last video we talked about uh, creating Azure Functions, it was an introduction to Azure Functions in general. Uh, but this video is a sort of follow on to that, it's looking at an extension to Azure Functions called Durable Functions which allows you to manage state in a serverless environment. So let me give you a, an example use case for this because we're talking about managing state in a serverless environment. Um, but I want to go into a bit more detail about what I mean by that. So essentially what this allows you to do is to start a function and to be able to check in to see what the state of that function is and then act accordingly. So for example, in Azure Durable Functions, you can create a HTTP endpoint, call that endpoint, let it go off and do some stuff, but it will always return in the first instance, so straight away, a URL that you can check in on to say, are you done? So this is really powerful because it means that you can have longer uh, operating processes running and then you can just check back in at later points to say, are you finished or is it at a certain state? So we're going to make one of those today. We're going to go through the example project and we're going to look at how we can build durable functions so that hopefully you can see how these may fit into your current Azure function environments. So to create an Azure durable function, uh, you can use an existing function app, or if you've not created one, take a look at the previous video and that will explain how to create a functions app. So I'm gonna assume that you've got a function app already open. Um, so here I've got the, the last project that we were working on and we created uh, a couple of functions. We created a HTTP triggered function. So you can see here, HTTP trigger. Uh, we also created a timer trigger as an example. Uh, so we're just going to use the same method to add a new function, but the difference here is that the function is going to be a durable function. So we'll leave it as function 3, that's fine. Uh, and then it will ask us what kind of function we want to create. So here we would then choose durable functions orchestration, click add, and it will create that function for us with an example function. So it's actually created three functions as part of the same class. So you've got your first function, function three, you've got a function underscore hello, and you've got a function underscore HTTP start. So HTTP start is a function that is always created as part of these durable function examples. Um, and essentially what's happening here is you're, you're getting a HTTP trigger as if you created one manually, where you can request a get or create a post um, and then inside that HTTP function, we have some logic. So as part of the example, it's calling starter.startNewAsync. So starter is part of the default dependency injection on this function. It's added a iDurable orchestration client called starter. And what that means is it can call out to this orchestrator, which is managing the state of the overall function and it can say I want you to start one of the functions inside this durable function namely function 3 so you can pass through the name of the function so it's expecting orchestra orchestrator function name and then optionally you can send through an instance ID but we don't need to for this one so essentially running back through the journey if you were to call this HTTP function it would go away and do this logic which is to start this function um, then it will log to say what it's done. This start new async will return an instance ID. So it's an instance of this function three that is now running, that's been created. And then we can use that to say, send back a URL to check in on the state of that function. So let's have a look at what this looks like then. I'll breakpoint it. So I'll put a breakpoint here and we'll start the app. So you can see the, the various functions that we've got. There's the two functions that we created before, function one and function two. But now we've got function three, which is an orchestra orchestration trigger, function three underscore hello, and function three underscore HTTP start. And this is the function that we want to call for our test. So I'm gonna copy this URL, and we'll just do a get request to start with. If I open a browser window and then pop that into the address bar, it will call this function. So it's gone into HTTP start. And now if we were to start that function, it starts it asynchronously returning the instance ID. And then we can return to the client a URL for them to check in on for that instance ID. So this is the response that we get. 
And as you can see, we've got the instance ID for that function that was called as part of the internal logic of this HTTP request. So we also get this status query get URI, which is the URL that someone can check in on to see the state of the function that we've just called as a result of that HTTP request. So if I just copy that URL, so it's that there, put that into the address bar, do a get, and there we go. We've got the state of that function. So we can see function three was the name of the function that was called. Uh, instance ID is the same as the one that we had returned back to us. And the runtime status is the big value that we're concerned with. So completed means that it's finished that task. And then we've also got the output which is the expected output that's come from that function. So you can see this is really useful. If you've got a long running task for which you're expecting some kind of output, you don't want to just be leaving the user waiting for that to come back. So using a durable function, you can say to a function, uh, go and create this data and then give me a URL that I can check in on. And then I can periodically check that URL if the um, runtime status is completed, then I can take the output at that point. So I can manage the response based on the state of the function. Now on top of this, you can also interact with your function as it's running using the orchestrator. So as you can see here, we've not just received a um, query URI to check the status, we've also received several other URLs that we can use. So for example, we've received a send event uh, URI. So here we can say if the function is waiting for an external event to happen, then we can post those events to the function on this URL. So that means that the function doesn't have to start and then finish, it, finish its work um, as a process. It can do something and then wait for external influence. So to demonstrate this, I'm going to make the function wait for some external input before it returns the cities. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to before this outputs bit here because you can see it it builds a list of outputs and then returns it. I'm going to say um, ba, 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 ba. I'm going to create a flag of um, let's say updated by external app equals false. Okay, so at that point, you could say if updated by external app equals true, then do these outputs and then return that. Else, and then you can throw an exception. So I'm just going to say new exception didn't get approval from external app. Now there's a big problem with this in that this will always fail because it, the way it's built at the moment is this flag is false uh, and this only returns if the flag is true. So we need to actually put in something that will wait for the external event. So here's where we can use the orchestrator context to wait for events. So what we can do is we can instead of setting this to false from the start, we can say await context Dot, and then what you can do is tell that context that you want to wait for an external event. So I'll say wait for external event. Um, now you can just name the event or you can say that you want the event to be of a particular type. So we could say bool and then we could do our name of the event afterwards. So if you want to name the event um, go ahead and there you go. So what that means is the function will start, then gonna say, I'm gonna wait for the go ahead from this external source, which is sending in on that URL. So in order to demonstrate sending events into this function, which is waiting for that event before it proceeds, um, I'll do this via HTTP. So we'll do the HTTP get on HTTP start. Uh, it will move into this function, which will then call this function three, um, which will then sit here at waiting for an external event of type bool, so a true or false, uh, and the, the name of the event is go ahead. So I'll show you how we can enter that event and how it responds to it. So the function app's running. Uh, if I go over to 
the URL. So I'll get the URL for HTTP start. I'm going to open a Chrome window. Let's get rid of this. Drop the URL in. So that will kick us off. And that's already started this process. So now this function three has, has been called and it's waiting for an external event called go ahead. So that's returned the various information around state. We've got the status query URI, so I'll just check the status of that. It should be sitting at running because it hasn't completed as a result of waiting for the event that I need to send in. So you can see here, runtime status is running. So let's send the event in. Now, one of the things it sent us back from the HTTP request was send event post URI. So we can copy this. And obviously, in most applications, you would do this programmatically. You would pass the response, get this URI out, and say, okay, for this instance of this function, if I want to check the state, uh, or if I want to send something into like an event or something like that, then I can use those URLs for that instance. So I'll copy that. I'm going to put that into Postman. So I'm going to paste that in. And then there's a few things we need to replace. Well, there's one thing we need to replace, which is the name of the event. So the event that we're waiting for is called go ahead. So if I type go ahead there, um, and then it's also expecting a type of bool, isn't it? It's expecting a true or a false result. Um, and then following that, it's saying if the res event was true, then it will proceed. So I'm just gonna set this to true here because this expects uh, JSON and it's expecting a bool. So I can just put true in the body. I'll click send and you can see it's gone back into the application and indeed update by external app. Updated by external app is true. So it's waiting for that event. That event has been received. And now if I click continue, it's been accepted. And then if I go back to this page and get the status scan, we should see that it is completed. And it, yes, it's completed. So there you can see we've kicked off a function, but we've been able to manage the state externally thanks to durable functions. There's several other things here as well that we can do. So for example, say you wanted to um, have some kind of timeout or something like that, you could, or you wanted to stop the uh, function from running programmatically, you can essentially say post to this terminate URI and that will intercept the function and stop it. And also if you wanted to restart it, you can send a post to this URI. So you can see here, the idea of this is to start a process, a serverless process, but then to be able to track it and manage it after the fact which is not something you can do with a standard Azure function. Once the function started, it's pretty much running. So I hope this was useful. Uh, I really like Azure Functions, and for me, durable functions um, are a whole new level. It is an extension to Azure Functions, but I think it's a pretty essential one, uh, and I've been using it quite extensively in recent work. For some people, this could facilitate a lot of the back end of an application. So if you've got a cloud-based application and you don't yet know what you want to do with your design, if you just want to prototype something, this is ideal because it means you can do stateful work, but you don't have to worry about the infrastructure as much. So definitely, definitely check out Durable Functions. If you found this video useful, then please like and subscribe. It's a massive help to the channel. And please do stay tuned for more .NET tips in the future. See ya.